It's Wes, welcome to this video. Today I'm gonna compare the Fuji XS10, which came out last year, with the Fuji X-T4, which also came out last year. I owned, past tense, the Fuji X-T4, and I used it every week, if not every day. Um, when I wrote this script, I said I don't plan to get rid of it, but I have actually sold it and purchased the Canon R5. This gets a little into the craziness of Wes and trying to experiment and find the right combination, but if I hadn't purchased the X-T4, I think the XS10 would have been everything I would have needed. So this is all in retrospect and hopefully this helps somebody. Hopefully this video helps you out. You're a beautiful person and a good person. And if no one has told you that today, let me be the first person to tell you that. I'm going to break this discussion down into three three major points. First, let's talk about all the good things both cameras have in common, which is a blessing of the Fuji APS-C universe. Great sensor, 26 megapixels BSI CMOS sensor. BSI means backsided illumination, meaning it's built internally to allow more light to hit the sensor, leading to better low light performance. They both have it. X mount, you can use all your great Fuji lenses and other lenses you can adapt or use directly on the X mount. My favorite is the Viltrox 56mm f1.4. IBIS, stabilization, 8 frames per second of mechanical shutter, 20 frames per second of silent shutter, or 30 with a crop. Fully articulating touchscreen, lossless compressed RAW files. Okay, those that's what they have in common. Now let's get to the differences. The NPW 235 versus the NPW 126S battery, 126S battery. The 235 has one and a half times the life of the 126. So 90 minutes instead of 60 minutes. Quite impressive. That's on the X-T4. 500 shots per charge versus 325 shots per charge. Dual UHS two card slots versus a single card slot. 4K 60 versus 4K 30. 240 frames in 1080p. And you have 10-bit internal versus 10-bit external. Stabilization, you have 6.5 stops versus six stops. Viewfinder, you have 3.68 million dots versus 2.36 million. Touchscreen LCD, you have 1.62 versus 1.04. Fully articulating touchscreen. Now you have weather sealed versus non-weather sealed. Do you need high write speeds? UHS-1 versus UHS-2, so that's 104 megabytes per second versus 312. UHS-2 cards offer faster read and write speeds and are designed for videographers who need to write and back up large capacities of data, large amounts of data. UHS-1 cards provide slower speeds, but they're far cheaper to buy. So mainly designed for still shooters. 607 grams here versus 465 grams. A minimal grip versus a beefier grip. So just to recap, do you need a weather resistant camera? X-T4 is your answer in all types of weather. Do you need two card slots? X-T4 is your answer if you need the ability to back up your shots to another card. Do you need high write speeds? X-T4 is the answer if you plan on writing a great deal of video data or if you plan on using high speed continuous shooting a lot. Do you need a higher degree of customization? If so, X-T4 is the answer if you need the D-pad and the additional, additional buttons and controls. Do you need 10-bit internal recording? 4K 60 frames per second? X-T4 is the answer. Do you need 400 megabits uh, bitrate video? X-T4 is the answer. XS10 is an entry-level camera with premium Fuji image quality. It's easier to navigate, easier to use, easier to get started with, easier to afford. So I always come at gear questions with three points. Use, performance, and price. This is a helpful framework, a great mantra to help us through the question of whether the X-T4 or the X-S10 is the camera for you. You can see by the price point, the design and the video specs, how Fuji intends to differentiate the two cameras, but take the time to run through the faithful framework. Use. Are you a hobbyist or semi-professional user? Choose the X-S10. If you're a stills photographer more than a professional video shooter, maybe you could choose the X-S10. The way you'll use it, if you're not as comfortable dialing in the perfect exposure and balancing ISO, shutter speed, and aperture with manual controls, the XS10 can be more suitable. Use? Professionally? Choose the XT4. Stills photographer with a significant need to accommodate high speed shooting, continuous shooting? Choose the XT4. Performance. Now, the X-T4 is going to outperform in the higher video demands and the high-speed continuous shooting, and the X-S10 will be respectable in all other regards. So just keep that in mind. And price. 
you can get up and running with the XS10 and a lens for the price of just the X-T4 body. So if you're balancing your budget, you might find the XS10 your pride and joy. Hopefully this has been helpful. This was easy for me to talk about because I use the X-T4 as my daily driver and the XS10 had similar specs when it came out right after I purchased the X-T4 and I thought, do I have buyer's remorse on the X-T4? So I wanted to run that by you and share that with you. I'd love to know your thoughts about the XS10. Um, personally, I don't know anybody who owns it and shoots with it. So if that's at you, leave me a comment and I think it's a great camera and just consider the points I made above. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. If you liked anything about the video, give me a like and leave a comment and let me know if the X-T4 or the X-S10 is for you or what other camera you prefer. Talk to you soon.